Then there's another question that the patient likes to ask is about the can I eat curry? Oh, <gasps> our favorite. Rich Malaysian can say no. Curry. I can't imagine that telling to our patients, especially our Indian and Malay patients, their lives are all on curries. So what do you think? What can we tell them? Yes, you can eat curry. Why not? Why not? However, <laughs> I like that. However, <laughs> however, however yes. this one, you if this you word. eat outside where the curry is mostly uh, full of santan, coconut milk, try to avoid banjir your rice with the gravies because it's full of uh, oil basically. Whereas if you cook at home, always you can alter the recipe by replace half portion of coconut milk with low fat milk at, to reduce the intake of fat. Yeah, so that picture shows them, the first picture shows you how the rice is banjir with a lot of gravy. Whereas the second picture shows you the vegetable plus a small amount of gravy, uh, which is your curry and your rice. So that one applies to your suku suku sparrow again, right? I have an advice uh, when you're cooking curry at home, you cook it uh, with the curry and make it uh, well done. Then only you pour the uh, milk because if you pour the milk early, it'll start curdling mm. and then the curry will look very, very weird and that's why people don't understand. Mm. So once you have actually cooked the whole curry, last minute you add the milk and switch it off. And that's how you eat, uh, take uh, curries when you don't use santan. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. You know, Minhui, they keep, most of our patients, they keep asking whether they could use uh, coconut oil in their cooking and whether yeah. it's good. Mm. Yeah, they keep asking this question. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, like coconut oil, right, increase the HDL, the good cholesterol, but also at the same time, it increases the LDL, the bad cholesterol. Because like coconut oil is more high in saturated fat. So if you want to use the coconut oil, then you have to take note on this. For people who have like requirement for about 2,000 calories per day, um, you have to limit your oil intake to like from 7 to 9 teaspoons of oil. So like no matter it's good oil or bad oil, the oil intake you have to limit it. Um, so just now we're talking about good or bad oils. Mm -hmm. eh? So the bad ones are the ones that actually uh, cause a lot of issues to your arteries. So they can be the chicken uh, oil, you know the meat, uh, so chicken fat, uh, beef tallow and all these oils eh, which are from butter. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we have to be very cautious when we use oil. Some people think that if I use the healthy oil, I can use any amount. No, that doesn't happen. Whatever it is, oils or oil, they contribute to calories and the total fat intake. So you need to be very cautious. Between the 7 to 9 teaspoons, You most it will be good that you adhere to healthier options of the oil. So does that mean there should be no more fried food? Oh, do you think that's possible? I don't think so. But I have a suggestion that maybe you need to have or uh, maybe cut down on your fried food maybe once or twice a week, mm -hmm. smaller portion. But if you have a frequency, uh, then the portions must be smaller. But you must remember there are other methods that you can actually order the food, right? Mm -hmm. We can have uh, asam pedas fish, we can have ikan baka, uh, we can have baked chicken, grilled chicken, tom yam chicken, grilled beef, grilled a lot of variety we have. So let's look at a variety of methods of cooking uh, instead of the so-called favourite fried. Mm. Hey Minhui, I have this question here. Mm. Can I eat fruits? Uh, eat more fruits, no problem. Ah. Okay. Ah. You hmm. can eat fruits, but then you have to control the portion because like fruits, there are important sources of fiber, vitamins and minerals but good doesn't mean that you can eat in excessive. So you are allowed to eat like two to three servings of fruits for one day. The example of one serving of fruit you can see inside the pictures like if for apple, orange, pear, that one like one medium size is okay for you, it's like considered as one serving. If like for banana, one medium size is okay to eat. And for watermelon, papaya, one slice is considered one serving. For guava, one medium is one serving. And for grapes, only 8 bg, at small size, is considered one serving. So it doesn't matter whether it's sweet or not? Yeah, yeah. it's okay. Most I, important, control the portion. Yes, I think control the portion. And people ask me how to take two to three servings. Normally because they take the fruit for lunch and for dinner, right? So how about trying for breakfast? 
Oh, and then they say, oh, we are Malaysians, we don't eat fruits for breakfast. And you need to break some habits mm -hmm. and get into it so that your body is well. Actually, I must tell you something. Fruits and vegetables are your fiber and they are the brooms of your body. They clean, they vacuum. Mm -hmm. So you have very good arteries and you have a very good uh, system in your body. So make a change right now. So there's another popular question. Can I eat durian or not? Oh. Do you guys love durian? Yes. Yes, Yes, we love durian. Yes, you can. You see, durian is actually a very rich source of potassium, fiber, vitamins. Huh? However, it is the way we eat. You see, we go there, we park our car next, we buy all the whole basket and enjoy ourselves. Right? Mm -hmm. But that's not how it is. Mm -hmm. Because it is very high in fat, it's also high in calorie. So how much can you take? And now this is the sad story we're going to tell you. At any one time, you can take three small seeds or one big one. Hmm, not happy, right? But sorry guys, that's how it is. Okay, I like these questions. Everybody says, in fact, most of them say, I don't like vegetables, but can I eat fruits instead? What do you think? Thing not could be like that. Why? Because fruits and vegetables have different types of nutrients. Correct. And if you have uh, diabetes, you have to control your sugar, so you cannot have excessive fruit intake. So the question you need to ask is, why is it that you don't like vegetables? So when I asked my patient, they didn't like the way the parents mm. prepared it. You know, their moms didn't prepare it well. Their wives made it even worse. They didn't like it. So people don't know how to cook vegetables, but actually vegetables are very tasty, very natural if you know how to cook. So uh, maybe you can consult dietitians and you know learn how to cook your vegetables and start having small amounts, two spoons, three spoons, and then eventually you will enjoy it. So how much is needed a day? Three to four servings? Yes, that's right. enough. That's enough, yeah. And so if you have cooked vegetable, it's half. Normally it's very easy. If you have cups in the house, cooked is half, raw is one cup, right? But if you can't eat that, just eat quarter, quarter of it. Slow and steady wins the race. Mm. So you see, one of the questions our patients ask is, after this procedure, they will say, can we take alcoholic drinks? Mm. What, what does the international standard say? Okay, so actually you can drink alcoholic drinks but if you are a man, you have to limit like to two standard drinks and if, if you are a woman, then you have to limit to one standard drink. So like one standard drink is for beer, it's about 360 ml, it's just like one small can of the beer. If you are drinking like wine, it's just like one glass, about 150 ml. And if you are drinking like light hard liquor, like whiskey, then it's beer about like 45 ml. How if uh, I don't drink for one week? Can okay. I drink, I'm a woman, so can I drink seven units on Sunday? No, you cannot. Because like, one day only can like for women, one standard drink only. Because if you drink in excessive, if you damage your liver, and yeah. this will like cause... Excessive sick. calorie, mm. and then the liver will not be able to metabolize it. So you're going to ask for trouble. So next question, can I drink coffee? Yes, you can drink coffee. Actually like one to three cups is generally acceptable. But it's not those like you add up with like sugar or creamer or too much of the condensed milk. You can see like if like one cup of coffee, there's like this amount of the condensed milk. That one is not what we are recommending. And also not those coffee with like cream on it. What we're recommending is just plain coffee with small amount of the sugar. Mm. However, for those with Mm, some people are sensitive to coffee intake. Uh, I know patients who tell me that even if they just take one to two cups, uh, they can feel uh, their heart beat very fast. So uh, I wouldn't say it's across the board, but studies have shown that some people are sensitive to it. So if you're sensitive to it, you just take one cup. Mm. And also if your doctor told you to stay away from caffeine, then coffee is yeah. not okay. And I also want to emphasize, uh, you know, in all matters of nutrition, you please go to your dietitians. You know, we are trained to actually teach you how to modify your diets. And, you know, we know how much of calories and proteins that you need. So that some people, they, they don't understand and they go into severe malnutrition because they go and mess up with the portions of their food. So in matters of nutrition, please contact your dietitians. Okay, last question. 
How about Pati Haruan? Hmm. Can I take Pati Haruan? <coughs> <laughs> it's very funny, yeah. When patients, uh, they always feel something in the bottle is better than the natural, right? They always have this idea. Um, actually, Pati Haruan is allowed, but you need to read the label of the Pati Haruan, whether it's uh, any party, any extract, chicken, whether it's fish or everything, you need to look at the herbs, you need to look at the traditional medicine that is added into the uh, bottle because these have possible drug-nutrient interaction. See, the other thing you need to uh, be aware, when you are coming for any procedures, not only angiogram or anything, you need to tell your doctors and your dietitian what are the supplements that you are on. Because if you don't tell us, we will not detect it. And some of these supplements, if you don't stop, during surgery, they can cause excessive bleeding. Yeah? So it's very important that you declare what supplements you take. The other thing I would always ask my patient is, why are you taking the supplement? What is the reason behind it? You know? And sometimes you have to be very careful because you are on certain types of drug and there are contraindications. Right? For example, Normally, after a bypass, I would advise patients not to take any of these extracts which has got ginseng because ginseng actually increases heart rate. So, those are things you need to ask. I know friends come and give you gifts of all these things, but please check with your doctor or dietitians on these matters. Mm, that's so, that's all, that's all we have for you today. I hope you have enjoyed our question answer sessions. Thank you so much, and I hope you will make some differences. Unlearn, relearn your dietary habits. Stay heart healthy. Stay safe. Bye.